Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name's Kyle, and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. So if that sounds interesting, make sure you subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Now I've taken both the JavaScript and CSS assessment, and I scored in the top 5% for both, but I've heard the HTML assessment is really tricky, and honestly, I don't know that much about HTML, so I'm guessing this is gonna be much more of a struggle. Let's get started. Okay, what does the WBR tag do? Well, I already don't know what this do. I know BR is for line breaks. Let's see, it formats a sentence to be easily breakable. Oh, maybe it's a word break. It requires the browser to wrap the current line, presents an opportunity for a break in a very long word, if needed for proper page display. That would be my guess. It breaks a word in two pieces using a hyphen to connect the words. Ooh, it could be either one of these, honestly. Presents an opportunity for a break in a very long word, if needed for proper page display. Uh, I'm going to guess it forces a break because a BR tag always forces a break. So I'm guessing a WBR would always force a word to break. That doesn't really make sense, though. <laughs> I'm going to go with this, even though I really don't know. So let me know in the comments what the actual answer is. What does this code do when the browser cannot play sound or the source files are missing? Audio controls sources sound.mp3. Type equals, okay. When or where does this text display? when the browser cannot play sound or the source files are missing. The text displays over the audio controls unless CSS is used to position it elsewhere. The text displays under the audio controls. The text displays when the browser cannot play the sound. And the text never displays. Mm -mm 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 -mm. That is a good question. I've never put text inside of an audio control before. I would want to say that the text displays when the browser cannot play the song, but I don't really know displays over the audio controls, under the audio controls. I don't know if it would display with the audio controls or not. I'm guessing if it can't find or play the song, it'd probably still put the audio control, so it's gonna put it under. I'm gonna go with that. Again, no idea, let me know in the comments below. What is the root element of an HTML document? That would be HTML, because this doc type is not really an element. It's just like declaring what the doc type is. Root isn't anything, body is actually not the root element. So yeah, HTML. What is a semantically correct way to mark up this layout? Making money is what you have to do to stay in a business. Okay, so this is a block quote with a quote at the bottom, and it's expandable here. So not a P, not a Q. I'm going to go with block quote. Right, so there's two block quote ones. There's one with a Q tag, and I can't scroll this for some reason, but we'll just trust that it ends with a Q tag. We got a citation that's emphasized, and then just a citation. <laughs> And this one uses a paragraph instead of a Q. I don't know what a Q tag is used for. And I would guess that you don't need the EM because that's like saying there is emphasis here while the citation tag is kind of doing that for you. That's going to be my guess. Mm, but, but should you use the Q? Because what is a Q? I, I don't know what a Q would be. Maybe a quote would be what the Q tag stands for, but I've never even heard of it before. This is a tough one. It's, it's either one of these. I know it's a block quote, but I don't know which one it would be. I'll go with this. Again, no idea. Which statement is correct? The article element represents the dominant content of your document. Okay, that's definitely wrong. The main element represents the dominant content. That is correct. Main element represents the dominant content of a section of a document. Nope, that's wrong. That's what an article is. And the main element represents the dominant content of an article. Okay, so at least I know this one. The main is the dominant content of your document. The blank tag is used for marking up a short code snippet while the blank tag is used for marking up longer. So pre is for longer and code is for shorter because pre allows you to have like line breaks inside of it while code is just for a really short snippet of code. It'll actually wrap if it goes across different lines. So at least I know that one. What is a semantically correct way to mark up this layout? We got mailing address, some mailing information at the bottom. Oh geez, I never use the address tag. This is gonna be a fun one. So. All these start with an H4. Okay, a couple of them are P's. I'm going to guess that it would be an H4 in the heading. So it's one of these heading ones. Then we have an address with a line break, line break, and then a link for a mail to. Okay, that is an, an email. So that makes sense. This one's also a mail to, and this one's also a mail to. And this one's a mail to. So there's no differences there. These two use address. One of them uses an EM for the italicnesses of it, and the other one doesn't. This is again a question of like, does an address by default use italics or do you need the EM to actually cause it to have italics? 
I'm not 100% sure, to be honest. Other than that, these two are exactly the same. Oh, this one also has a strong tag that is not even closed anywhere. So that's clearly incorrect, unless they meant to close it. But I'm going to go with this, because an H4 doesn't actually need a strong tag, because it already is strong by default. So we'll go with that, even though I think this one should have a strong closing tag, but it just forgot it. What is not a valid attribute for the text area element? Uh, read only, that is valid from my understanding. Form, I think is valid. You put like the idea of the form it's associated with, not 100% sure. Max, not 100% sure as well. And spell check, I would assume that's on there. Ah, this is a tough one. I don't know for sure. These three on the bottom, it could be any of them to be honest. Max, I don't know if this would like represent the maximum number of characters that are allowed inside of it. Spell check, it just sounds like something that should exist. And form, I feel like you can specify form, but maybe you can only specify form on buttons. I'm not sure. I'm gonna go with max. Yeah, I'll go with max. I think I'm wrong though. What is the best way to apply bold styling to text? Use CSS, EM, strong, or bold? Uh, this is a bit of a loaded question if you ask me. I mean, you can use a strong tag to bold text. You can use bold to bold text. Strong says that there's like emphasis. It's like saying this is strong emphasis and it bolds it for visual people but for people that can't see it'll you know emphasize it when the you know reading program that they're using to read the screen bold doesn't do that it'll just make it bold visually i i mean technically i would say css is the best way to apply bold styling to text unless you're also trying to emphasize it and then strong would be better and bold could be used instead of CSS if you really want. Actually, there's no bold tag. It's just B, so definitely not bold. I don't know what I was thinking. But yeah, I'll go with CSS because strong also implies emphasis while CSS only applies the bold. What should fill in the blank in the HTML code below? Form the methods post. Here's the action, which is an email. Uh, oh, is this like type, the content type? This is like the type of the thing that's being posted. I'm going to say it is type. It's either type or ENC type, I think. Hmm, because <laughs> this would be like encoding type. I'll go with the ENC type actually, because I don't think it's just plain type. Yeah, ENC type. Not 100% sure though. What is the best way to code three choices within a form so that the user can select only one item? So this would be like radio buttons. Uh, okay, these are radio buttons right here. This is a data list, not quite what I'm looking for here. These are also radio buttons. And then down here, we have another data list. This is like a select drop down list. Only select, can select only one item. Okay. Name equals options. Let's see what these ones have. The names equals options. I'm trying to see the differences between these two radio button options. ADs are different. Name is the same. Type radio options i honestly don't see any difference between these any of time on this it's one of these two i don't see any difference between these type equals radio like they look exactly the same to me okay one has a label and one has a legend i'm gonna go with the one that has Ooh, is it label? No, it should be legend. Okay, it's the one with legend. There we go. I was looking at the wrong thing. What is the correct markup to provide a quote in the alt attribute of an image? Ooh. Interesting. So here they're escaping the double quotes. Here they're using double double quotes. Here they're escaping the single quote. Oh, this is an interesting question. I am not 100% sure, to be entirely honest. I would assume it's this one. Because I think if you just put quotes side by side like that, it's not actually going to escape them. This obviously doesn't work because there's quotes inside of quotes. This bottom one is escaping the double quotes, and this top one escapes the single quotes. But I don't know if you can actually escape single quotes like this. I'm not 100% sure, to be honest. I'm just going to go with this bottom one. It seems the most correct, in my opinion, but... I could be wrong. It's either this one or the top one. What does the label tag do? It programmatically associates a text label with an interface element. It visually labels form fields, labels web pages with important information. It visually associates a text label with an interface element. Good question. 
I mean, technically it visually labels form fields. <laughs> and I think it's really only used with form fields. Because I mean, it could technically programmatically associate a text label with an interface element, like an input. And it could also visually do it. I'm going to say for form fields only though, because I don't think, like you could use like an area label attribute or like an area labeled by attribute, but label tags specifically, I think are more so for form fields. When should you use the aside element? For anything in a sidebar? No, it should be used for the whole sidebar. For anything you want to move to the side, like a pull quote box, a sidebar, an image with text wrapping around it. That seems correct. And the content can be removed without detracting from the page's message. That also is correct, I think. And for anything in parentheses, that's not correct. I think it would actually be this third option because it can technically be for anything that is just like optional. That's why it's kind of like called in a side. I think. Because it wouldn't really be used for an image with text wrapping around it. That would not be a use case for an aside. So yeah, I'm going to go with this third option. This test is, is very hard. People were right when they said this was hard. What is the semantic meaning of the HR tag? Okay, it draws a horizontal line. That is correct, but I don't think it's the semantic meaning. It designates disruption. Separation of sections within an article. Tag is deprecated. It should not be used. Designated topic shift within a section at the paragraph level. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I have no idea. I mean, technically, it draws a horizontal line. Does it have any meaning beyond that, though? I don't really know. Designates a separation of sections within an article. That doesn't really seem that correct to me. And it designates a topic shift. I, I think I'm just going to go with the draws a horizontal line. And I'm going to be prepared for some terrible results, most likely. Or I guessed really, really well. Okay. I guessed really well then. Or a lot of people did equally as bad as me, because I don't think I deserve top 5%. I only probably knew half of those questions at best. And the other half, if not more, I completely guessed on. So I'm going to say I either got really, really lucky with my guessing or a lot of people also did as bad as me on this. So hopefully you did better. I would love to know about the ones that I didn't quite know. Some information in the comments. Leave it down below. I'd really like to know if you know the reason why it works one way versus not the other way because I was really confused on a lot of these. So with that said, thank you very much for watching this video and have a good day.